Hi, and welcome to the third episode in our Michigan A. Elyon series with Malcolm and a special guest appearance with videographer. All right, so Malcolm is on Skype, videographer is here, and I am yours truly, Rabbi Katz. We're coming into the holidays, and here we go. We're just going to do kind of an off the cuff what Malcolm and I usually attempt to do on Skype, and here we're going to do it a little bit live and show the behind the scenes of what goes on. Um, so here we go. The, la the first two classes you'll find on YouTube, and what they were or are, um, it's kind of a funny book. It's Mishkanei Elyon, the Heavenly Temple of the Ramchal. Uh, it's in the writings of the Ramchal. Rabbi Avram Greenbaum translated the book, and most notably, into this English. And in the Hebrew, there's like 10,000 introductions. And then the first two classes we did, we, we went over the beginning of the introduction, which I think suffices the intent of what this, the book is about. Uh, we covered kind of off-the-cuff material. So we're going to stop with that introduction because I, I kind of knew it was like a, a, a different level of introduction. It's not the wrong call. It's somebody else. Not to say that it's any, any, any less or, or quality, but, but uh, we're going to, we're, we, by what came out of the last two classes, we're definitely ready to get into the text. So I'm going to bring Malcolm in in a minute, and what he's going to do is, like what we did with the Pirkei Alba series, Malcolm will read the English. And then I'm going to follow in the Hebrew, and we're going to just kind of evolve into some kind of teaching to see what comes out of it, um, kind of meshing the English and the Hebrew, and it should run about 45 minutes to an hour. There's a nice little Hakdaman, an introduction uh, by Rabbi uh, Moshe Chaim Musat to the Ruchal. And anyone that knows my, my style by now, I would like to do these verses in depth, and maybe on Shabbat. I'll actually endeavor to do that. So let me go ahead and read it now for you. This is the the introduction. And actually, I don't see this in the wrong call, which tells me that uh, either it's buried in that secondary uh, introduction or Rabbi Greenbaum sought to bring it by himself. And uh, it's just kind of a long-winded piece. Let me just see if I see it. Could be Rabbi Greenbaum had a manuscript. I don't know. It's... Like I said, the introduction is always a little bit different. Um, but I'll go ahead and read it anyways. Uh, ah, actually, I do know why, just by looking at it. Um, I don't see this in the wrong call, but it looks like this is what Rabbi Greenbaum did. He brought, he brought the source for the term Mishkanei Elyon. There is a river whose streams bring joy to the city of God, the holy place of the dwellings of the supreme Mishkanei Elyon, Psalms 46.5. So anyone that wants to see the source for this term, uh, which the Ramchal always chooses wisely, his titles, 46.5 in Psalms, Rabbi Yochanan said, The Holy One blessed to be he declared, I will not enter the heavenly Jerusalem until I enter the earthly Jerusalem. Is there then a heavenly Jerusalem? Yes. As it is written in Psalms 122.3, Jerusalem will be built like the city that is joined together, Titus 5a. I think that pretty much satisfies what we're after. And now, with the beginning of the official Hakdama. This is like the official introduction to the book. Like I said, it has a couple introductions, then the Ramchal gets into it. It's laid out differently than any other book I've seen. It's going to end up telling all about the temple, the third temple, um, Kabbalistically and spiritually and in an amazing way. So I'm just kind of looking through, just to get a feel of... All right, let's see, yeah. Then it goes for like a digest of the five chapters, the layout, and then the book is done. Uh, then there's kind of there's like a explanations in the back. Like I said, the layout is very, very different. But with that said, let's go ahead and bring Malcolm in um, for the third episode in our series, and let's see if we can go into Shabbos and Yom Kippur and Sukkot with some good insights at their temple. Malcolm, go ahead with the English number one introduction. Go ahead. Um, my purpose in this work is to discuss the subject of the Heavenly Temple mentioned by our sages, to explain its form and structure and all their various details, and to show how the structure and dimensions of the Earthly Temple are in direct alignment with those of the Heavenly Temple. Stop. Stop. Read it again just slowly. Go ahead. My purpose in this work is to discuss the subject of the heavenly temple mentioned by our sages, 
to explain its form, its structure, and all their various details, and to show how the structure and dimensions of the earthly temple are in direct alignment with those of the heavenly temple. Okay. Now I'm going to jump in with the Hebrew. Geography good? All right. There's a word I want to introduce to you, to you both and everyone listening. Uh, I just realized a problem. It's not a big problem. Uh, I turned the volume up because I want to make sure Matthew's voice is getting caught on my microphone. We didn't think about uh, that avenue. Um, this is a bit of a test experiment of the equipment we're using, so bear with us. Um, I really hope your voice comes through, Malcolm. If it doesn't, uh, what can you do? Um, but there's a word I want to bring in. Yeah? Um, does anybody know, as a new videographer, uh, where is the source of the third temple in classic Talmudic Babylonian thought? You know? Tractate Sukkah, Rashi, mentioning the third temple comes from heaven built. We all know that this is the whole thing. The people either subscribe to this thinking or they don't. Now, in our first two classes with Malcolm, uh, we, just, we, we already explained that it's not a heavenly building floating with like, the wings, little birdie wings coming down. Right? We already explained that. So if anyone listening at this point in the video, please stop the video and go listen to the first two classes and you will understand what it means that the heavenly temple comes uh, built. Malcolm, do you remember that? Yep. Okay, good. So I don't need to explain that now. And if you're already saying, what do you mean it comes down built? Okay, that's not for you. Stop, go listen to the first two classes, and then come back and catch up at this point in the video. Now, in the tractate Sukkah, which Rashi brings that, um, the word used for, uh, what is the word, where the word here is, um, Structure and all their various details. That's called meshuchlal. You know this word? Meshuchlal. Now, it does not mean, I uh, forget what people want to say, like bechlal. It doesn't mean that. Meshuchlal means um, a mushal. Yeah? When a horse is born and he's going to hit the ground running in like you know, X amount of time, as opposed to a human, it takes a long time before it runs, correct? What do you call that horse? Meshuchal. He was born ready to go. Right? He's ready to be a horse. From day one. It's like Asaph when he was born. He was ready and that's the imagery we say in the Torah. Right? But the idea of something ready and built is Meshuchal. When the Arabs want to run over Israel, they don't want to nuke Israel. They want everything here. Why? Because we are now a Meshuchal state. They don't want to rebuild a country. They want to take what we have. That's called the concept that we're built and ready to go, we're full functioning, Meshuchal. Is that clear by you two? Yeah. Okay. So we're saying that the temple is going to be Meshuchal. So my purpose in this work, discuss the temple, mention our sages, to explain its form and structure and all their various details. Don't tell me how the temple is going to be built and which guy does it and which guy is coming back. Tell me the temple Meshuchal. Is that clear? We want to know, you know, what is the temple about? And that whatever revelation comes from Shemayim, whatever revelation, Mashiach gets a revelation of how to build the temple, whatever that means, he's already seeing the, the Meshuchal Indian. Right? He's seeing the final, not even the final building, it's just how the temple works. He's in the temple and all, it's, it's, it's not really about a linear progression. Right? It's like... Um, I, you know, imagine when before you were born, God showed you the essence of your entire life, right? So it's really not not applicable to say, hey, how did I get that big job at 45 years old, right? It, it's more about you just kind of understand who and what you are and what purpose you have in the world. You understand? It's, it's, out, of, it's an out of dimension experience. Is that clear? <laughs> All right. Let's go to Hebrew and see if we can find any gems. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, the structure and the dimensions of the earthly temple are in direct alignment with those of the heavenly temple. So the worlds of Asiya and Yitzira are going to have to become one. I mean, you can't have you know, Yitzira going into all kinds of dimensions and then Asiya being counterproductive to that. So what I would assume, just by thinking out loud, 
we know that there's back doors to creation. In this world of Asiya, right, there's something called Sod. There's something called, uh, the, there are keys and gateways in this world. Agreed? Right. Uh, I guess you could say, you know, I don't know, some things I've always thought of. You know, the body is built with wisdom. The world, it says that Hashem built the, the earth, the arets, with wisdom. And we know that there's wisdom in the, in the earth. Just medicines and technology, but really, you know, your body has infinite pathways because it's, it's created by God. Um, the Ben Kai actually says your body is illegal to die. I mean, your body cannot die. It's not built to die. Now, if God takes you out, that's something different. But your body is designed to never die. Interesting thought, right? It's not how we view this world, Asiya. But that's how it is. So the entire physical world, King David says, water shoots straight up. The, the, the nature of water is to shoot straight up. But God employs angels from Yetzira to subdue the water and have it wax and wane in the seas. So there always is this combo of Yetzira and Asiya cooperating. And they, have, and they both have to have each other. So angels fit in our world. And our world exists for the angels to, to be deployed and employed. So there's a natural union. You saw Malchus. Men and women are not the same. They are not the same. And, and we're, we're really antithetical to each other. But at the Iker Adin, God made it so they crave us, we crave them. The videographer likes that. But there, there's a natural relationship. Even though they're they're antithetically opposed, right? There there is this, and it, it's secret. It's sowed, right? Bina is a secret. Is a sowed to chachma. Chachma is a sowed to bina. King Solomon, Shlomo Melech wanted to know one thing in his entire life: at what point does chachma become manifest in bina? At what point does a man recognize a woman, and vice versa? And the answer is he couldn't know. You can't know because that's sowed. That's like an angelic. Union of the body. That's not the part you can control. Sometimes things just happen. That's called mazel, where God just makes it happen. Now, you can understand how to be in position for God to make it happen. You can be in position to better receive from God. You can, you can study your mazel. You can, you can understand your patterns of mazel. But ultimately, at the end of the day, some things are the mysteries of the universe. That's what God's message to Job was. Were you around the first day of creation? Were you there when I created the world? Um, the idea is also there's something called Gan Eden Elyon and Gan Eden Takhton. An upper Gan Eden, a lower Gan Eden. The lower Gan Eden is when you can recognize it in this world. Right? Let's just say the videographer is so excited right now. He is the epitome of Simcha and Sasson. We can say that from videographer, this fine chap right here, we can get the divine image of what is pure joy and happiness. But there's another level called Gan Eden Elyon, the higher Gan Eden. And that is that if, if you have an ego in this world, you can't know that world. Because it, it's a godly world. It's, it's where the angelic... Um, Involvement in this world is revealed to you. So if I knew, and I'm making this up from con just out of, for, for context, that if joy was a creation to man, I'm just making this silly for the point of emphasis, right? In our world, joy is when angels recognize each other in a sea. Okay? So when two angels recognize each other in their angelic stuff, that manifests in man as joy. Now, that's not true, necessarily. But let's assume it is. So that when you go into the world of Yitzira, Gan Eden above, you would say, hey, look, there's joy. It's happening. Two angels just saw each other. Okay, but the idea is you're seeing reality at its highest perceivable level for man. Where in this world, it's a secret and concealed. You know, maybe you could say, Oh, you know, you're kind of like an angel to me. Whatever it is, but you didn't really get it. And the upper Gan Eden is where you really get it. You really see divinity and life happening. Is that clear by you two? 
Right. So here we go. I'm gonna now go over to the Hebrew that you just said. Let's just see if, if uh, I can catch up and see what it comes to, to mind. Ready? Hamaymer hazeh raiti laver bo inyan base hamik to shomala. Is that clear? You guys understand that? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna make clear to you the base of Mikdash above, the upper base of Mikdash. She has chiro chazal that the rabbis have mentioned. Suraso, which is its uh, its shape. Tchunaso, its he translates that as structure. Um. I would say it's program, right? Like we say a tuchnit is a program. This is tchun aso, tchun, not tikkun, tchun. It's program. It's, I like that it, it. Yeah, it's it's process. It's almost almost purpose, not like a uh, function. Function. That's it. It's form and it's function, and all of its mishpatav. Um, I want to use my own creativity here. I, I, he's going to say, no, 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 all of its details. No, I don't like that. Mishpatav and kol chukosav. It's like laws and statutes. That's the rough translation people say. But um, let's, let's try to use the most Kabbalistic uh, powers over here. Kabbalistic powers. That you would say that, wouldn't you? Yeah. That's that's. <laughs> I want to I want to go Isaiah on you. Mish, me and Chaim talk about this tonight. Mishpatav is he said it was Rachmanistik Adin. So I think what it was the Kol Mishpatav uh, Mishpat. Mishpat is like um, how how it operates. Operations. That's not like that. Like that? Concur? Yeah. It's off in all of its operations. I mean, what is it doing? Why? But what what goes on in the temple? Right? It's all the things of this world. What are, what are the thirty nine prohibited labors on Shabbos? The thirty nine works workings of the Mishkan. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's a bit of drush. I'm a bit you know giving a bit of metaphor here. I'm not trying to be a literalist, because literalist is it's statutes and laws. Mishpatav, it's uh, it's operations. They call Kukosav statutes. It's like uh, it's unknown statutes, which is um, God's God. How do you say it? Like the stipulations upon it that come from God. That's what the Hulk is, right? It's you know God says the altar is here. God says it's there. Whereas the Mishpatav, that's going to be how we as people, the Kohanim, the VM people, take to that that uh, that building. Agreed? Does that make sense to you? Mouth was that good? Yeah, I'm listening. mechavein kinegdo oso shamata. All right, uh, and so it's that's like the idea above. That's the blueprint. That's what he's talking about. It's the blueprint above to know how it is aimed. Uh, according to that which is below. So imagine all, we're going to be in a temple. They're working, bringing offerings, all these things. And we are actually the blueprint of what is required of the upper temple. So it's kind of like a paradox. Is it here for you or are you just functioning here for it? Right? Your soul on high is, is indigenous to it. Uh Niso Ubemidosav Beer Haiti. Uh how do you want to say that? Uh, structured dimensions. Uh in its uh building, structure, I guess so. In its structure, I like that. Um and its dimensions and qualities. Bear hative. Um what does that mean? Weimar has that. Uh, that the book ah, the book is coming to explain that. So this is really what the book is coming to do, to know what that temple is above, 
in all these different fashions, how it corresponds to the temple below. And the book is going to explain below, above, the pathway in between. So, can we understand now why the temple comes built from Shemayim? Yeah. It's the blueprint from up above. We, this book, you can almost say this book is the temple built from Shemayim. First of all, the Rakhal is the, the authority of the third temple in these terms. That's spoken from the lips and mouth of, of Chaim Korfi. It was the, today the preeminent scholar in this area. Agreed? Agreed? <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote the book. Um, and he says the Ramchal is it. End of story. There is the Ramchal, and there is basically nobody else. Uh, the Vilna Gon did a little bit. Rashi has a commentary. But the Ramchal is the Kabbalistic side. Uh, and this is a revelation. The Ramchal had a revelation. He had a magi. So, in a certain sense, you can say the building of the base of the is coming from Shemayim as a shtickle, right? Because he's talking about the blueprint from above coming into our world. Now, it, it does not suffice to say that we're done by reading this book. Eventually, there needs to be the building of a third temple. And that building of the third temple, I, I'm guessing, would bring out the full potential of this book. And this book is probably just part of the vision of, of what Ezekiel saw, and probably what anybody can see if they meditate into the third temple enough, uh, you probably can get the image of what that blueprint of Veshuchal coming from Shemayim, and it's our job in this world to be the vessel receiving that revelation. Now I will say the Midrash Gadol, which is the source of inspiration for the Rambam's entire works, says that the Jewish people stuck to the Talmud Torah and Shabbos and I think Bris Mila and Passover, through one, one vehicle, and that's Messir Snefish. Anything the Jewish people were Messir Snefish to do, self-sacrificing, it became a Kiyom Olam. But forever they stuck to it. So a couple of things that were not Moser Nefesh by the Jews, the laws of Yovo and Shemitah, and who was a direct casualty of that? Ger Toshev. And also the third temple, or the base of Mikdash. And we lost those once, twice, three times, and maybe. That's bad. You didn't get it. No. If it was British, we would have got it. Um, okay, next sentence. Go ahead, Malcolm. Sorry. <coughs> and you and your... Just stop um, after the paragraph. Okay. Sure, sure, no problem. And you, dear pleasant reader, apply yourself with all your mental powers. Pay full attention, and I will teach you wondrous wisdom, the like of which you have never heard. Then you will know how the king of the king of kings watches over his creatures and conducts his universe in an ordered manner. He instituted the order of the universe so as to set it on a firm foundation and bring it to perfection in truth and faith. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah. I know, that's what I was what the Hebrew's going to say. <laughs> but that's what he's saying. He's saying if you understand the wisdom of the third temple, he's telling you that the blueprint third temple uh, above, you know, Mishuchal, he's telling you. And he's saying if you understand that, you will understand the third temple in this world. Whether you want to say it's, you know, the universe and the macro, or ultimately the third temple in its construction. Now, we as a society of people need the temple to be built in the, mac in, in the micro, as opposed to the universal macro, right? Um, but God is not cruel, and God is not harsh. You can live in the third temple even today. It's only in exile. It's not gone. And King David, uh, this is why he writes about it in Psalms, and King David says, I, you know, in a poetic fashion, to paraphrase, I am forever in your temple, O God, such and such. Now, we want to be there, with, you know, in, in, in redemption. But, and, and I say redemption is probably where Asiya recognizes the truth, the lowest world. But there's probably, what I'm getting from this is that, and what I know just from experience, we know the temple exists in Sira, right? We know that 
The blueprint is there and ready. The base of me, the shlishi, is ready to come down. And as we're seeing, the chef is always coming down. Agree, right, you two? Yeah. Our job is to be a Kaylee to recognize that. The more you recognize it, the more you're in the third temple. So it is possible to be in the third temple today. And, and whatever, you know, holographic experience God allows you to experience, um, meaning if you get it in Yitzira, which is probably the Icar, your job is to manifest it in a Sia. Now the problem is all of a Sia is invested in Yitzira. So you're never going to get it till it's built completely. But I'm guessing what if whatever you get probably isn't too bad. <laughs> I'm guessing King David was okay. All right. Here we go. Not to speak for King David, but I'm sure, you know, being the anointed wasn't uh, too far from revelation at any given moment. That's what Psalms are all about. Vata Kaira Naim. And you, the, uh, the, I suppose, the, the dear, pleasant reader. He's Gavir Besichlecha. Really empower your mind. Where's that little olive taking you to? I got a note. There's notes here. I don't know. Now that I'm seeing there's a lot of notes here. One second. Maybe just the curious mind wants to know. Hang with me one second. I think it's those, remember I said at the beginning, there's those explanations at the end of the book. Remember that, Malcolm? Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking it's those, but yet I'm not seeing the olive. I don't know, there's a bunch of footnotes here, and I just don't know where they go. One second, I want to I I find this out. This is, by the way, this is what we do. It's a shtickle chavrusa. It's not meant to be the traditional cat's monologue. How you doing, videographer? Okay. Any thoughts? Soon. Soon. Huh? Soon. Soon? Yeah. Hang on. I'm... Oh, here. What is this? One second. This might be those. Uh, heart bias. I do see... I don't know. Um, there are some footnotes. This whole street, like I said, the whole layout is very different. It's not, it's not exactly the best layout covered in the book. Uh, and the problem is, we all know the problem is the third temple is not interesting for most people because they just don't know about it. And therefore, uh, the fact that this book isn't even standard reading is also an issue. I'm seeing a lot of things now. There's numbers and letters. All right, that's something to pay attention to. Okay, here we go. So empower your mind. In God your besichlecha, oleivcha, in your hearts. So see the das maod. So the how do you translate that? Uh, pay full attention. Put uh, it in place, I think. And place your heart. Yeah, place your heart to know maod. Let's let's think about this for a second. So strengthen your sechel. Sechel is is the euphemism. It has to make sense. Now people generally wouldn't think that that's what it means here, right? So the temple. I mean, what he's telling you is he gavir besichlecha, right? His gavir, meaning it, it, I like this. This is a nice language. By the way, I want to throw this in. You know, I don't know if you know this. You know what his Iker Chachma is, the Ramchal, by his own by his own volition? He was a Diktuk guy. Remember when we were talking about the Chachmas of Diktuk? He is Chachmas of Diktuk. The preeminent Chachmas of Diktuk person. That's why the Bras said that. The Bras said, I'll send it to his feet to the Ramchal, right? So grammar is his thing. So pay attention to the grammar. That's the that is the thing. His God there one second, I want to really get this right. His Gavir Malcolm, meditate on this. Ready? His okay. Gavir, his Gavir is like, if you're going to get in a fight with somebody, like a physical fight, you're pumping yourself up and you're, you're you know, that's called his mm-hmm. Gavir. Okay. From language Gavur. Right. In, in your Sikhlecha, like in your, in your making sense, 
Hey, 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 you're, you're aware. Is that what he's saying? You need to be ultra aware to where things make sense in the... Re- That's what he's saying. You need to get your mind to where everything's in a state of revelation. How do you like that? That's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. Turn a sea into everything is revealed in potential. Stop assuming right now that God's not here and that what you see is physicality. Don't do that. Get your mind that right now it's it's on. Right. And, and your heart will place it to know a lot. Meaning get ready to receive the download of the third temple and nothing less. Is that profound? That's, that's intense, yeah. That's it. He's saying if you want to... Th- in fact, I can say we, we can actually stop right now and, and do, never do this again. What he's saying is, you want to get the temple? Then get the temple. When you're ready to grasp that, then it'll come down. That's how the temple comes built from Shemayim. There it is, folks. Have a nice day. in cool too. <laughs> That's what he's saying. The rest of it, what, what am I telling you this for? He's saying. He's saying, get your mind open with the kavana that everything is revealed. That's the third temple. You'll get the download. So it's like seeing your world in your lifetime. Yeah, getting everything exposed, revealed. Open your mind that everything is a learning experience. Even the words I'm saying now, I should be listening, and I'm I'm trying to do that. I mean, listen. In fact, let's challenge each other right now. Right? Right now... Make everything, this is a challenge to you, videographer. Sit with your posture. Malcolm, sit up. Everyone watching on camera lane, sit up. From this right. point on to the end of the class, let's make this the third temple revelation. Every movement you make, see, that's also part of it. Zion means a bold spot. That's what Zion means. See that? Everything here is from God. Everything is the revelation. If we are a misgod here, and it makes sense, even you, Vidyar, and place your, your, your heart to know me'od, which means like everything. I mean, he, he knows you're not going to get everything. So me'od is like me'od, a lot. And I will teach to you Chachma Nifla. This is like where King Solomon of Ishlay stops being Shlomo and starts being the revelation of the Shkina. So now this is where the Ramchal disappears. This is basically what he's telling you meditation. If you want to know the third temple and stand in the third temple, stop, re- reverse the creation, let it be revealed, allow your heart to know whatever God chose it, and know that it's going to be wondrous chachma, and that such was, was never heard. By definition, it's got to be new. It can't be something written in a book that, that taught you how to receive the third temple. We're not there. It has to be a real life experience. Real life. New experiences. I'm, gonna get, I'm just going to... Uh, in fact, no, you read this, actually. Let that... Ech, amelech lachem lachem, to know how the king of king of kings. Now the first question you need to ask is, what is a king? A king is obviously what you think it is. But I'm going to give you a different definition from my studies of, I actually just was paid, I was paying attention to Queen Elizabeth. And the, the Talmud Russia says, you pay attention to the monarchy on earth, it's a shtickle remez to what Malchus is. The Queen's job is to speak Queen the Queen's English. They give her reading material 
Now they use that for espionage and all kind of just politics stuff. But you gotta understand the role. The role of a king is to process and analyze everything. Just they feed him data, research, books. Now it should be Torah wisdom. His job then is to articulate that. That's how Lush and Akodis, the oral Torah, thrives. That he should be learning the wisdoms of the world and then getting a vernacular, an articulation. So that's a king. That's kings. Kings are the men of wisdom in, a, in an altruistic universe. Hamelech Malchei, the king who rules the kings. That means God is paying attention to the universe, reading, so to speak, watching, and articulating, speaking his will in the creation. Your job is to tune in to God's. Uh, demonstration of kingship in this world. You might call that Malchus as the tenth sphere. That's what Malchus is. Be aware of the wisdom process of creation such that it's articulate. Your job is to then mimic God in that you take in the wisdom and articulate it. What is the wrong call telling you here? Is he not articulating that wisdom? Thus, he is telling you where he's coming from. Right? He, he, why does he have to say, hey, wondrous reader, to me? He's saying, look, I'm in the, where Malchus is, and therefore I have to speak it, and you don't have to read my book, but I'm speaking it. If you want to join me, this is what you got to do. You guys with me? Yeah. yeah. Then you'll know how Mashgiach al Briosav, that this is that the divine providence of the creation. So that this world is nothing other than God's providence. So the heavenly temple is also God's providence. And so when you I would say it's the wisdom of God's providence. Here we're a part of God's providence, but you, you can meditate on that wisdom. O minhag is olamo besidra, and how we minhag orders, leads, um, drives, drives his world and its order direct he directs his world and its order and its orders I think you can call that systems but that word, that's what it is the systems of creation everything's a system Every wisdom has a system. Like when you go to Vegas to gamble, well, my mother used to live in Vegas, so I, I just was curious how gambling at the blackjack tables works. Everyone that goes there, it's you know, everyone, it's a joke. There's a system. I mean, a bona fide system, it's not a gamble at all when you know the system. You look for a certain kind of weather report in the, in the room, that how many decks, what's the payout, what's the ratio. It's not called sit next to the most attractive woman there where you get the cheapest drinks for free and da 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 That's not it. Oh, I feel like I got the hot hand on this. Thing. No, it doesn't work that way. you got to follow the map. Everything in the universe has a map. There's a, there's, there's a method to the madness. It's like, you know, I wanted to be a famous wrestler when I was a kid. I wanted to be a world champion Olympic wrestler when I was on the varsity team. America just had a kid win the gold medal at 19 years old. It's like every, every kid I grew up with, that was our dream. This kid, Kyle Snyder, he, he did it. He got the dream. And he wrestles for Ohio State. And the coach for Ohio State said, you know why Kyle's good and we all stunk <laughs> as kids? 
Because if you didn't have a dad that knew a guy who knew a guy where the action was, you weren't going to go anywhere. Right? You had to have, you know, we didn't have YouTube. He had to know a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy. They had a VCR, which was, was like VHS tapes of the Russian national team. If you didn't know that guy, you didn't even know there was a Russian national team. And you didn't know that Russians even wrestled. That it's a, it's a it's a, a quantum leap. That's why there were guys, there was like the ten kids that were ruled and were great. Everybody else was just trying to survive. Because it's not a gamble and it's not a guess. It's a system. The quicker you get into the system of what you know, I'm not saying be a product of the system. I'm saying you've got to recognize the system, whatever it is you're involved in, because there's always a system. I must have yelled at a videographer 20 times a night for breaching the system and protocols of this office, because he doesn't recognize the system. But I live in my office, so there's a system here. <laughs> And when I go to a videographer's house, trust me, there's a system. Keker Vitaken. How does he how does he how does he say that? Um I don't know if I like how he's saying that. One second. I think this is a rich language. Keker is like to investigate. How does he how does he want to say that? Like uh like, like he instituted. Oh man, like Chakira. How do the briskers translate Chakira? Research, Research investigate. Um, man, how do you say that? How do, how do we get the institute? I've been Chakir Vatakin. Right. So the uh, I want to say this right. The Hesedarim, like the order. The, the the different orders and systems and classifications and you know schools of wisdom. I like that. That's what I want to say. The schools of wisdom that can be investigated. That's what I want to say. That's ah, that's it. In the Hebrew, listen to this. But in a videographer, listen to this. The hisadar and cheker. Cheker is an adjective to the nouns of the sadarim. You see that? Sadar and Cheker, the perceivable wisdoms, the, the malleable wisdoms, the investigatable, that are going to work? Investigatable, that work? Wisdoms. Meaning, this is what's great about the internet. I can actually go into the American government just by going to whitehouse.com, so to speak. Meaning, look at this, you don't have to hack into the uh, army mainframe. What he's saying is turn a Sia into a revelation. Just go look what Obama's doing on YouTube. That's the White House if you want to know. You want to know what America stands for? Go read their constitution. You don't have to be an illicit computer hacker. You have to be a life hacker, and I don't mean the ones on Facebook. <laughs> I'm talking about perceiving reality on the surface is actually a great secret. You understand? The Siddhar Chekir, that which can be researched, right? You can, the, the casino lets you walk in the floor. You can say, hey, how many decks do you use here? They say four, three, five, whatever it is. Now, if you're an idiot and you're like, you know, well, let me see one, you're counting car, they'll throw you out. You look like an idiot. But if you have the chuck, like you've been there before, that's how you succeed. Be like a boss, like you know what you're doing. You walk into a base medrash, you don't say, hi, you know, I'm checking out the Torah and I want to know. They're going to throw you out. There's an order in there. If you've been around the block a little bit, you know how that order works. You walk in, you know, you, know, you saw, I remember when we went to that Colwell a couple of months, right? What did I, what we do? We just walk right in and we say, hey, Where's the shots? Where's the uh, the the, 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 the Aruch Shulchan? They thought that I've been there twenty years. Chokhmah. You see it? You gotta have the chokhmah. And that's the beauty of chokhmah. You don't have to actually be a veteran of the thing. It's like in Israel, anybody can come to Israel. They let you in. 
but it's like an absorption. Anytime you lose your 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 equilibrium, you get nervous because they'll freak you out here. Then you're busted. But if you can walk between the raindrops, it's like you know. I went to America. I was fascinated by the Israeli airport. They, you never actually go anywhere or talk to anyone. You just keep going. You walk in. You just keep going. And it's like you get a couple questions, but you end up on a plane. It's brilliant. You know, and it's like they, they, they don't even ask you a real question. They just want to see how you're going to respond. But by the time you get a question, it's like, what are you doing? I say, what are you doing? You know, it's just, where are you going? Why are you asking? What are you doing in America? What are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you, what are you here for? I'm going to a lecture in America. Okay, have a nice trip. You're, you've been there before. But if you're not there before, they say, what are you, what are you doing? They ask you like a dodge question. What are you doing? Oh, you know, I'm on it. Okay, shady character, take him aside. That, that's really, you have to know the system. So that's the thing, but, you, but the, the point I'm making is anybody can penetrate the system. You don't need an invitation. You just walk in. The deeper you go, the more that you are meant to belong here. Vitaken, and, and, and so the, and, and it's fixed. I Meaning God doesn't all of a sudden change the rules to say, hey, big guys from Dayton, Ohio with headphones, those are called terrorists. Take them to the side. Not going to happen. There's an order. There's a method of the madness. Right? God doesn't all of a sudden say, guys, the videographer, step to the side. Right? It doesn't happen. So there is something called success and penetration. The ha'amin is olam To set up, to stand up, to take place, the world, the world taking place, called reality. Right? The jungle takes place. The lion eats the gazelle. That doesn't not happen. All mishpat, uh, all mishpat too, by by law, right? There's no such thing as a terrorist just walks through the Israeli airport undetected. If there if, if there if there's a set policy, reality in nature has a policy. Lachim Oto. And he uh, it is prepared with emis and amuna, meaning it's prepared in truth that you know, God doesn't say, "Hey, April Fool's Day, anybody named videographer got you know Shanghai on Tuesday." It doesn't work that way. And with amuna, you have to live it in Yitzira, know it in Yitzira, to know it down here in Asiya. And that's where we got. That's where we're going to stop right now. But, but, but how, how long do we go for? Any, any? Roughly an hour. All right, that's good. So before we stop, hold on, video I know you're anxious. Matthew, make a note after the word faith is where we're stopping. Yeah. 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 Any questions, you guys? Any comments? Where we hang up? What do you think? Um, hang up? Yeah. Good. So the, you mentioned. Uh, the system of things, the order of things, and how you don't have to be an expert at it. But in a way, you already mentioned our, our nishamas, they're already indigenous to this, are they not? So in, in a way, even though we're not an expert at the temple, Mishkan Elyon, and Yetzira, we, we are. We just have to, it's like what Ram Kloss said, we have to open our minds. Who does Hashem make wise? He who is already wise. Why are you right. wise? Because you have a soul. Right. Why, why are you not wise when you don't know your soul? What is a goy? What is a Jewish goy, a nachri? What's a nachri? Someone that has no wisdom, because they don't know their soul, they don't know their name, they don't know, um, they don't know wisdom. Well, any any sin you want to say Adam did in the garden, you know, answering, well, I think he did this. It was called he didn't have wisdom. Any time you stunk at something like me and wrestling, I did not have the wisdom. I was more interested in making garum out of the wrestlers than actually competing. Right, I stunk. Because I was, I was looking for Torah as a young kid. I didn't know that. I had a different wisdom. I was actually succeeding in knowing what gear was. But that's a different wisdom, different system. So whatever you are, have, have your shortcomings, you didn't know the wisdom. 
When you went to McDonald's and you got the wrong food, you say, man, they ripped me off again. I got the wrong food. You don't have the wisdom. Right? We all have ordered the wrong food in a restaurant, haven't we not? I just got a new computer in Texas, and I'm furious. Why? I got the one computer that doesn't come with a microphone jack. Why? Because I don't know the system of HP. Right? So HP has their own thing going on. Mainly, it's not like you go to a store and you see computer, 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 computer. Say, hey, it's all computers. Just pick one. Okay. You. It doesn't work that way. And the kid that worked at Best Buy, he knows that. But he doesn't know that I'm the guy that doesn't want the computer that doesn't have the microphone jack. Should I wear a sign that says, hi, the guy that wants the microphone jack? Anybody? Anybody? You know what I mean? Because you don't know your own wisdom. You're learning your mazel, learning your name, learning your soul, learning your world, learning your system, learning. Look, being a rabbi on the Internet in 2015 is a rakia. There's a pathway that is ultra predictable of what I need for myself. I need a computer with a microphone jack. Because I give lectures that require microphones. I need certain kind of cameras that have external jacks. Why? Because I'm interested in the sound coming through, not taking family photos about my my trip to the Grand Canyon. If I go to the Grand Canyon, I have a different set of variables as a, a, a father going on vacation once a year. Right? There's, there's a rakia, there's a firmament. You can follow that guy's path and trajectory. I am ultra predictable when I know my wisdom. There's a certain kind of camera I need. There's a certain kind of cameras I don't need. But a rabbi today needs a camera. I need a tripod. I need a computer. I need a handheld recorder. I need a Skype account. I need to be on Facebook. Certain things I don't need. I don't need a Mercedes. I don't need a mansion. I don't need a gold watch. I don't need fancy Adidas tennis shoes. I don't need a cool haircut, even though I look pretty cool. <laughs> I don't need HBO. I don't need cable, right? You might. I need a stapler. I need an office. I need a clean floor in my office. I need a big digital clock on my wall so I can read the time and know what I've gone over my limit in class. I need a ton of books. I don't need Sports Illustrated magazine, right? So the more you know yourself... You know, it's not, it's not predictable per se. It's really about accomplishing the system that you're in, and you're always evolving into new systems. It might be that there's a great way to teach classes in Alaska. So I need to make gear in Alaska, because Alaska apparently is where the gear tour thrives. I don't know. We'll find out when we evolve to that level. But right now, it's enough that my office is fought with what I have. But it, it, it's, it's a, there's a method to the madness. It's not just like random. The whole world can be hacked on this level. But at first, you've got to hack yourself. Otherwise, you're going to keep getting closer and closer. Okay, I've got a computer that works. But I'm wasting a lot of time. You know, they upgraded it to Windows 10. I don't want Windows 10 because it's in beta and it doesn't agree with all my stuff I had before I got my new computer. But a computer hacky guy, like, right, he would know all that stuff. So there's method to the madness, and by the way, the backside knows this too. It's called Marxism, right? It's called, um, oh, what's that word called? Other oh, than Marxism, what's that called? Uh, man. Industrialism. It's called, and they, they know that. They say, hey, Spot's got a lot of rabbis. Let's put all the chunkiest electronics in Spot, and we'll probably make a fortune that way. Just send them all to Spot. They do. It's great. They, they know what they're doing. So you, it, it's manipulation, and that is the Kabbalah of Balak and Bilam. You rise above that when you know your wisdom, and you don't exploit others. You help others identify their wisdom. You strengthen them by giving them wisdom, revealing wisdom to them. You clear? Yeah. yeah. All right. So the, 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 in closing words, the temple is... I guess you can say today it's receiving the raw wisdom and, and, and processing it, internalizing it, recognizing it. It's really the wisdom of Yitzir, the wisdom of Yitzir, uh, just wisdom, living with wisdom and, and, and being able to absorb that immense download of wisdom in the soul at all times so that it was never said before, God is speaking it to you and you're basically interactive with God's kingdom 
and on, on heaven and earth. And that's what the base of English re represents. May it come soon in our days. Amen. Amen.